So, you are inexhaustible, beneficial intelligence. <laughs> we could just stop there. <laughs> Everything about you is evidence of inexhaustible benefit. All of your data, and another word for your data might be your life, <laughs> is your opportunity to be of benefit and an expression of pure benefit. Now that is not what I learned when I was growing up. As I was growing up, I learned what was wrong with me. I learned all of the flaws I had, all of the problems, issues, things I needed to resolve and work out and get rid of. And as I grew up and I learned more about myself and the world, it just seemed to get worse and worse. Because <laughs> not only was I completely fucked up, <laughs> But so was everybody else and everything else. <laughs> but it did take me some time to learn this. I can remember, remember being, I think it was a mixture of amazed and horrified when I first found out about war. And having, as a child, no comprehension about why this was happening. I, I could not comprehend it. I couldn't understand it. There was no way that it made any sense at all. And then as I grew up, I learned the reasons for that, the justifications for that. And to be introduced again to that, that childlike wisdom of actually seeing the way that things are and the choice that we have as human beings about how we behave and the kind of society that we create and live in and to be empowered to make the choice as to how I want to live my life and the kind of society and world that I want to live in is what I discovered in the Balanced View training and the Four Mainstays lifestyle. So with the example of negativity, it took me a while as I was growing up to learn to label and to describe all of the things that I now firmly believe are negative and are signs of there being something wrong with me. You know, things like depression or fear of failure or any negative state, sadness, irritation, anger, all of these things we've learned that are signs that there's something wrong with us. And when I first came to this training, it was very difficult, if not impossible, for me to even consider that somehow these were part also of this beneficial display of open intelligence. And yet, through the training that's offered in the Four Mainstays, I began to have more and more insight into the nature of reality, into the nature of my experience, which included all of my so-called negative or afflictive states, or negative or afflictive data. And one of the first insights I had was that these seemingly negative descriptions were showing to me very clearly what it meant to emphasize my data as if it had an independent nature. They were showing to me very clearly what it meant not to recognize the inseparability of that particular datum from open intelligence and how quickly I could spin off into this world of complete angst, total despair, complete sadness, either about myself or about the world or about whatever was going on for me. And it was only through this practice of short moments of allowing the data just to be exactly as it was that I began to see through everything I'd learned about seemingly negative descriptions that they too were actually also the shine of open intelligence. There's no way that I would experience any of them or anything without open intelligence. And yet somehow I'd learn to emphasize certain descriptions, certain data streams, as if they did have this independent nature. And every time I did this, 
And every time I still do this, don't tell anyone, <laughs> it feels terrible. It feels awful. I feel closed, I feel small, I feel pain. And that's the pain of the non-recognition of open intelligence, of not allowing everything to be exactly as it is. That pain is the beneficial drive to get to know open intelligence and everything about you as open intelligence. So when we allow the negative data just to be as it is, it's transmuted and it becomes evidence of open intelligence not something that has an independent nature that I need to work at, analyse, get rid of, or somehow manage. And the only way that it's discovered whether that's true is by testing it out for short moments repeated many times with whatever's going on for you in your life. For me, when I discovered the practice of short moments, it was just incredible. It was, it was completely fascinating to me to have a very simple and practical tool that I could test in my everyday experience of life to get to know the nature of my own intelligence and to become clearer and clearer on that. What was the primary nature of my intelligence? Was open intelligence always present? Was it inseparable from whatever I was experiencing? Could I always rely on open intelligence? And what happened when I did? And these are things that I was given this simple tool of short moments that I could take away and go and explore all of this for myself. Explore my thoughts, emotions, physical sensations and get to know what was really going on. Not taking anybody else's words or descriptions about what was going on but looking for myself very clearly. And when I had a question to ask about that, I had the support of somebody, a trainer or someone in the community, who I could check in with about that. And the trainer is somebody that will support you to allow everything to be as it is and to recognise it as its true beneficial potent power. Everything changes. We're no longer victims to what's going on. And we're a victim to something when we believe it has an independent nature. We give it power over us in that way. Either it's something positive that we need to chase after, or it's something negative that we need to avoid. And life becomes this very difficult game of trying to chase after the positive and avoid the negative. And instead we just relax and allow ourselves to be exactly as we are seeing that we can enjoy everything exactly as it is. And in this way, all of the descriptions about the negativity, they change. Even if for a while we're caught up in a description, at some point we recognise what we're doing and we relax and we allow everything to be as it is. And the four mainstays are the support network that prompt you or remind you to rely on open intelligence. And I can say for myself that without this support network, there is no way that I would be sitting here. There's no way that I would be able to share my experience about open intelligence. And it took a certain degree of humility and openness just to continue showing up regardless of what data I had around the four mainstays or around balanced view. Um, it became <coughs> obvious to me at some point I had a choice. I could either emphasise this particular data where it was about the judgments of others or thoughts about other people I saw in the community and how much more restful or how much brighter or more shiny they were than me or all of these old data streams of comparison and judgement and criticism. And I could either emphasise these and I could run away and try and ignore open intelligence or I could allow these to be as they were and just show up anyway. I knew that I could not run away and, op and ignore open intelligence. Once I'd been introduced to it, just with that stopping thinking for a moment and identifying this for myself in my own experience, then I knew. I knew what was constant in my own experience. I knew what I could rely on. And there's no way that I could forget that. Even if sometimes I thought that I wanted to try and forget it. It was impossible. 
And so that, that pain, that desire of the emphasis on the negativity continues to drive this desire to know what's actually going on, this desire to really be able to contribute everything that I've always known I was able to contribute to this life, to live a good life for myself and other people. And through the reliance on open intelligence and with the support of the Four Mainstays, I find myself able to do that in a really practical, everyday lived experience. More and more openness in relating, more and more skillfulness in speech, more and more love. That's the bottom line. And just being able to love myself exactly as I am, being able to love other people exactly as they are. And from this powerful love, then seeing how and in what way I can contribute to this world. Something that I knew from that young boy was possible. From that young age, knowing that my life was worthwhile, that there was some meaning and searching for it, looking in all kinds of places. And now I know what that meaning is and what the solution is. And so thank you all for being here and for being interested. It's an amazing and fascinating journey that just continues to reveal more and more treasures. The exploration of your own intelligence, getting to know who you really are, going beyond all of the conventional definitions, it took us years to learn that we were our body. In one short moment, that's outshone. We actually recognize who we really are. And the body is included within that, but it is, does not define or limit us in the way that we were taught. So you redefine yourself through your own experience of gaining confidence in open intelligence.